Hi, in today's episode we have Neha. Neha is like the millions of women who have taken a sabbatical from their career to raise a family. But Neha is back with a bang. She started with meeting a few friends who were book lovers and she went on to create a community of book lovers on Facebook which has over 5000 plus members. She is also running her own book club along with two other avid book lovers and the club caters to readers from all over the world. From reading together to discussing, arguing about books, she likes to share her love for books with all. Of course, that's not enough about Neha. She is also a finance professional. She is a marathon runner. She is a foodie, as she says. But what got me very interested and hooked on to talking to Neha was about sabbatical. So, welcome Neha in today's podcast. Thank you so much, Mawa. And yes, it was wonderful meeting you as well in Clubhouse, and I am, uh, you know, looking forward to this podcast. Absolutely. So, Neha, you know what? This comes from a very personal space for me, where um, you know I've always felt that you know nobody has actually till now spoken enough, you know, about the hit uh, a woman's confidence takes when she becomes a mother, and then she attempts to reintegrate professionally. And I've been on that journey, and exactly like you have. So you know it's almost politically incorrect to say that women might lose their confidence uh, as new moms I should not be probably saying this it sounds uh, it's a politically incorrect statement to make but I think there's a huge amount of truth in that you know we struggle with our bodies we struggle with our sense of validity and you know and we barely mastered you know one part of mothering when it's time to add another challenging you know new variable to this mix of getting back to work and exactly what you have done So you know what I'd love you to tell me about your journey you know the sabbatical you took what you went through Neha when it you know when you decided to just call it off and look after home and her not sure moa i also get you know this topic is so close to my heart because i remember the journey it was eight long years and uh, uh so i had my post graduate degree and uh, you know i had my first child but somehow there was some problem at the home and we were not ready to keep uh, my kid in uh, babysitting at that point of time also um uh, my uh, commute to my workplace was almost 2 hours one way so you can imagine uh, you know almost 4 hours uh, went like that and then working and uh, because i was in the finance sector obviously work hours were also very long so i had to take this hard decision of uh, taking a sabbatical at that particular point of time i you know actually thought it would be hardly one year or two years before i would bounce back and so i started enjoying my motherhood and as you said uh, you know motherhood has its own advantages but in the back of the mind there's always this pressure going on as in okay uh, now 6 months now uh, one year now when are you going to get back you know so even i had my own questions and obviously whenever you meet your friends oh come on you're a post graduate you can't be sitting at home so that was uh, yeah so that pressure you know just boiled me down but um i understood that uh, one or two years um, the more you stay with your baby the more you are attached and the more it is difficult for you to you know come back so when i took a sabbatical at that point of time i was pretty sure i'll be joining in a one year or two but then my um, husband who is into it sector he started you know getting projects in different uh, cities and countries and then i thought okay i am at home so why not you know get hold of this opportunity and travel the world as well and uh, so uh, you know poor then after 3 years i had my second child and uh, so yeah life went on till 5 years i was very busy because my husband kept on going for projects and we were in new countries and i hardly had time off uh, from my two um, sons so after 5 years the reality hit me it was like okay now i have raised two sons now they they are little bit um, you know a uh, toddler stage and i can use some help and manage them but what am i doing but again um, as you say they uh, 
uh, we changed countries and it was not possible to get back into full time job so nevertheless i started uh, doing this time because i was a cost accountant i started reaching out to my friends and i uh, you know asked them if anybody has uh, wants me to write accounts or uh, you know investments because investments have always been my plus point and uh, uh, believe in or not uh, my husband used to work but all his savings and investments i used to manage so i thought why not um, you know uh, do that i mean uh, extend that knowledge and then i took a mutual fund course for 3 months and i became a mutual fund advisor and then i started this um, my own investment a small business where i just catered to my friends and um, you know immediate members in my network and just reached out to them that saying if they want a mutual fund or lic or fds or rds or whatever i am game and i'll be ready to help them so all and more at that point of time it was everything was physical it is not online so i had to go to their place i had to fill up the form and i had to submit that but yes because i loved it i just dabbled on to it of course this was not a full time job this was only a 3 to 4 hours job and then i also started uh, writing accounts for a particular company so this was the way i kept myself sane during my sabbatical and uh, as you know having two kids uh, is a battleground itself in the house so uh, i hardly i used to get time i mean i i, I used i could manage 3 to 4 hours and that time i utilized in my own self development and uh, uh, you know uh, catering to the small scale business of mine but i enjoyed it and i did not feel the pressure because i was doing the best of both i was taking care of my kids as well as i was i was also utilizing my degree to a extent obviously money is not that important at that point of time because people used to ask me oh you are a costing on that you are earning only 5 to 10k i, I mean since that's still okay right what is important is the way you keep yourself occupied so it's so interesting neha when you tell me about this because you know when i look back i remember that i was nationally actually heading an advertising agency's pr division and that was the only company that offered me that position out of bangalore and bangalore advertising agencies um, you know none of the large agencies had their head offices in bangalore and uh, you know and then i had to quit my work because my child had allergies and you know a whole lot of stuff and it was brilliant that i got to spend time with him and i'm gr- you know i'm grateful that uh, we both traveled we went out together but but and that but always comes whenever i speak about it because to come back and to reboot is so difficult and i remember when i met people you know for about 6 years i was telling people that i'm on a sabbatical because i think just the concept of you know everybody in india it's so strange that we really really uphold the whole structure of the family and you know ghar ki lakshmi and uh, all of that but you don't actually intrinsically uh, your condition to respect uh, women in many homes across okay and the role that she plays and i think you know what when i told people that i am a housewife because for long when i said that i'm on a sabbatical the way dear close college friend of mine turned and said actually for 6 years nobody's on a sabbatical it's all right for you to tell people that uh, you know you are at home and that's something i you know i could not put myself together to say that you your because your sense of value is completely based on the money you bring to the table yes exactly and you know what happens is this that invariably when the wife um, you know takes a break from her career obviously uh, the other partner takes over and you know he is uh, starts growing in his career and then the divide between the couple also starts happening you know i don't know if you'd agree with me there because what happens is that yeah the woman becomes uh you know her sense of confidence goes haywire because now she's suddenly dependent on the man for the money and the man the man invariably becomes powerful uh, because uh, money is power you know you one can't deny that you know and the whole sense of value that you bring on to the dining table is that he's bringing the bread and the bacon you're just lighting the fire in the kitchen you know and uh, yeah and you know the struggle is something that you know is something that i am endeavoring to really write and talk a lot about it but the way your confidence levels goes down you know your body has had a hit because you you don't recognize your body after you've had 
a child, you know, and you're not prepared for it because your grandmother, your mother, they've like accepted it as part and parcel of life. And no one has told you that, you know, you might have stretch marks, your bloody, your breasts are going to sag and your, you know, your stomach, if you've had a really large child, your stomach will sag. So, you know, all these things together, Uh, My God, Neha, my heart reaches out to every woman. And, you know, having you in today's podcast is so close to my heart. Because um, I can hear you when you say that, you know, you went from home to home. I did the same thing when I got back to my work. You know, when I went into the cafe and I started writing. I was so scared because everybody had moved forward. And then also in the creative business, everybody will ask you, have you made money? You know? And uh, money is such a, they just, you know, you, they, they make you feel so less about yourself sometimes because uh, when they ask you how much you're earning, because there's nothing called an overnight success, you know. So I was reading somewhere, overnight success is actually 10 years. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Mawa, if I may add, aren't these the expectations that we ourselves lay upon, uh, you know, us? We are not conscious about it, Neha. I don't think we're conscious about these expectations we lay. We are bombarded with these super women images, you know, in the media. We're bombarded with this. I mean, I've actually seen ads of this really beautiful woman with her hair all in place, lipstick and bindi. And she has 10 hands like Madurga. Yeah. yeah. And in, yeah. And, you know, you look at her and you really put her up on the, and of course she's really slim. And because she's obviously a 20 year old, you know, who's probably not had a child, but they made her dress up as a, a mother. And that is what is being imprinted into my head, into everybody else's head. And we push and we push and we push till we get that into the space of breaking down, you know, Neha? Mawa, if you may see, uh, see, money is, uh, you know, very, uh, uh, I would say, uh, you cannot compare money. I need to, okay, the happiness. See, because the way we were at home taking care of our kid and our house and we were also, you know, upgrading ourselves, if you say. We were also doing something. I mean, we were not just sitting idle or watching, uh, you know, you may say TV and just uh, whiling away the time. We were upgrading ourselves, but that nobody sees. Uh, People only understand the, uh, as you said, money that we bring to the table and the value of our degree vis-a-vis what we are earning. But I guess many times I've seen uh, many ladies, you know, working and getting uh, so less yet and spending so much on child care, which would have not happened if they would have had been at home or, you know, entire money is gone. So like, I, I, th- I don't think money should be a comparison, but yes, you should always be busy. That's been my motto. I don't know how. Yeah, that's probably because, you know, for us, we've had the other partner who's looked after the kitchen. But there are a lot of women. For example, my mother worked for money. Mm -hmm. She did not work because she was interested in having a career. You know, she broke away from her family, you know, from her in-laws and uh, because they were against her working and they didn't want to look after me. And my mother was very ambitious. Now when I'm really older, I can see where I get that from, you know. And, uh, you know, whatever she didn't have, she wanted me to have that. So she put me into this really expensive school, you know, in Shillong, which was not, which was beyond her means, you know. And she said she would do like, the, you know, because Shillong is a very cold place and, you know, you need different kinds of uniforms during winters you need the heavy blazers mm, with the sweater right. inside and you know and it rains so you need your gumboots and you need a separate kind of clothing for your sports days so how the uniform itself was almost more than half a salary you know and the books had to be done in such a way so what i'm saying is this that money is sometimes a criteria for people And, you know, the pressure, because I think invariably women are um, in charge. If your child is not doing well in the grades, uh, you know, the woman is always apologetic. If the dishes are not done in the house, the woman is always apologetic. I remember being apologetic, you know, about, uh, yeah, you know, if my son got into a fight in school and, you know, when the mother called me up, I almost felt that I've not done enough. And that not doing enough is so ingrained. In our system, Neha, that, I, you know, I mean, today I, I know when the listeners are going to listen, I hope they are going to be more sensitive, you know, to women who are sitting at home. Because I also remember when I took a sabbatical and I went into a get together. And the minute you tell people that you're a 
homemaker, housewife, they immediately brand you as somebody who doesn't have enough brains, you know, because you are just buying or aloo or sabzi, you know, which you're just buying vegetables. Yeah, and you're just judged. You know, you're judged you're, for, okay, absolutely. you I have decided to, uh, you know, uh, laze around. And we are working our ass off. So this exactly. is the judgment I don't want. And fortunately, things have been changing, Mova. Looking today, I think things have changed a lot. I mean, a woman is being given the freedom to choose what she wants. And obviously, the support system have increased. So, you know, people don't have uh, that much pressure as we had. I think men who were born in the 60s, 70s and the 80s are absolute obsolete now in today's society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And thank God you know, for that. You guys, re- <laughs> yes. They are yes. absolutely obsolete. They really need to reinvent themselves. They need to reboot <laughs> themselves. Because today women are actually opting out of marriage and not wanting to become mothers. Right. Because they know the cost it takes, you know, the, the cost you pay to be, uh, you know, running this whole system. But we can go on and on like when till the cows come home, you know. But tell me a little bit about your book club. I'd love to know that. Sure. Um, so, Mova, when I, uh, you know, after the sabbatical, I was working, working, working. And finally, after nine long years, you know, after working as a finance and investment and taxation and all, I felt something was lacking on my behalf because I always am a creative person. And I love to dabble in. That's a deadly combination. I know, I know. <laughs> Somehow it's there. <laughs> and that too also thanks to my mom because she's also creative as hell. Even today, she uh, dabbles in art every single day of her life and she is also a, a hectic person I mean she doesn't like to sit down for one minute so yeah you may say even I have got the genes from her and um, I used to take those arts and craft classes also so along with that I uh, used to dabble in arts I used to paint my walls and then I obviously I loved uh, reading books and books have always helped me to keep uh, you know sane because there was one point in my life where I was upset and there was something going on which was beyond our control Uh, so then again books helped me a lot and I think um, books gave me the answer to all the questions that I was asking. And that is the reason um, I've been reading now for three or four decades. And then I came across other book lovers and we, you know, sort of formed a book club where we could meet every month physically before COVID. And we used to exchange our uh, current reads, what are uh, they reading, why they like they what they are reading, whether they would recommend those books. And then, you know, we sort of started exchanging those uh, books. We had fun meets and I used to make bookmarks and give it to everybody. So everybody looked forward for that. So I think um, along with reading, meeting people and forming a, uh, you know, a group based on what you love is also important. So this uh, happened and uh, I started this book club and obviously after COVID we had this virtual meet and we had a WhatsApp group where we discussed every book under the sun and uh, we gave reviews and so I thought why not extend it to Instagram. So I made my Instagram page uh, this year and I co-host this page along with two other avid readers so i mean yes i'm fortunate to find uh you know uh, people who are share the same interest as me and that is how uh, the book club came into being and i would proudly say we are 500 and more members we have done author meets we uh, do buddy reads we read the same book come and discuss back and we also have reading parties and we uh, you know read for one hour and then discuss and we have a uh, virtual meet with authors we ask questions so there are a lot of activities and there is a santa meet and a book exchange so yeah sky is the limit for it <laughs> How wonderful is that? Because I have grown up in an environment of books. And, um, you know, my father is in, is a voracious reader and so is my mother. My mother reads a lot of Bengali literature. My father devours Bengali and English. And, um, you know, in our house, whenever I look back from the time I was a child, there was always a bookshelf. And, you know, that we, we left Shillong during insurgency and there was a whole trunk of just books that we carried with us which seemed like the most important thing uh, you know to have among your possessions yeah and even now you know he lives in Bangalore and he orders for books from Kolkata because he wants to read and you know so books have been a very integral part of uh, my home 
and it still continues that also changes the perspective uh, mahua because uh, the more you read the more you are uh, you know uh, you uh, get to know many people and many perspectives and you agree to disagree and there are there are so many books that obviously you will never run I out of books i think you just books. become more educated in the real sense of the word isn't it true neha yes 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 you yes. become more and, educated uh, think, because uh, so i think uh, you know educated in the sense because we all travel through books because we tend to go exactly. in this part of the world that part of the world so book is also an escapism for us uh, mama yeah book also you know what it does to us is this that whenever you're reading you get into another culture you get uh, you know you accept that there are different cultures and different ways of living life you know there are different geographies and there is a different landscape and there are different struggles in other places so i think that itself is such a huge learning and um, you know my father may not have traveled all of europe but there's not a place in europe and the wars that he won't know and that i really really i love men who read you know it's it's <laughs> it's intellectually it's stimulating yeah, yeah yeah it's extremely wonderful to see a man reading you know so you know if i go into a cafe and i find this man who's sitting and reading intensely without looking up as to what's passing by and i'm like mm okay. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so mama, you know last uh, uh, two days before i heard this uh, you know when you say ki um, uh, when a person is uh, you know reading a book you love i think the book is leading you to the person so yeah even books introduce you to some wonderful people it's not yeah. only people that introduce you i think books also introduce you yeah i mean you know turkey for me is with elif shafak you know yes. <laughs> so yeah i mean it's amazing the way she's written her stuff and my father used to read orhan pamuk and so many more i mean you know khalid husseini and then of course i mean being a bengali we were of course uh, hugely influenced with tagore and it was very much a part and parcel even before i could read and write you know i learned uh, you know some of the poems of satyajit ray's father shukumar uh, you know his the, the, this whole nonsense uh, lyrics and nonsense poetry or prose what you want to call it and the only one i think in india so yeah i mean coming down to um, talking about your finance work how do you dabble how do you take out the time i'm sure your children are grown up now neha and uh, I'd really like to know as to when is it that you realize that you have this left and right brain completely wired together? Because in my case, I completely switch off when people are talking finance. I mean, it's like a glaze that's over my eyes. But unless you're talking films and you're talking gender and you're talking art, I you'll get my attention. So I need to know when did you realize this whole wiring? You know, this whole how it's meshed in you. So uh, you know we also have this system that a uh, woman can't be good investors and they need a man to uh, you know uh, handle her finances and that was very wrong uh, because uh, I've seen my father who was making notes of notes and uh, you know he was always interested in investments and he ingrained in me this very early that you have to uh, save some amount of money every month and then I started off with that and along with that the more I saved and the more I invested I I just love the way that it you know gave me returns so then i went on to uh, find out different means and then get into know, get to know and read articles and i always found that women are okay i don't handle my finance you can talk to my husband but i said i will explain to you i mean let me explain why not you because even though she is earning she is like okay i don't know what um, where i invest and i don't know who um, where my money goes because my husband handles that so that i felt uh, should be somehow uh, you know is is to be changed somewhere and then i uh, took uh, two or three workshops for women where i showed them you know it is not that um, difficult once you know exactly um, you know it is not rocket science i mean you don't have to know every single thing to be uh, okay a finance literate obviously you have to leave it to the experts even i leave uh, my mutual funds to the experts because i don't have the time to go and actually study each and every mutual fund because that requires study and what is happening in the market so i have a knowledge of where my money should go but in exactly which mutual fund or which mutual fund is doing good that my financial advisor obviously uh, you know he, uh, they uh, guide me and i take their help i i tell i tell everybody i take i'm also taking help it's not that i am a one person single person handling everything but yeah and um, 
seeing me doing this investing um, you know my elder son and i started investing on their name and then i used to give them pocket money of 500 and told that i will take 200 out of that but i will also um, you know i will uh, equally put an amount of 300 and therefore uh, out of every 500 pocket money you may be getting less 200 but i am putting 500 in your name so they were also intrigued by this okay this this money that money that savings and i would proudly say my son is 21 now and he has um, 2.5 lakhs in his name because you know i uh, invested in his name and then he uh, took off in, when he was 18 years old and he started doing his own mutual funds investments and he basically learned from me so i think that is also important you know making your kids also financial literate and they also are enjoying the process So yes, yes, it is. It is. So it's. Are you so right when you talk about investments? Because, I mean, it, just in the beginning when we started a podcast, I had uh, you know the CEO of a company called India Assets. Her name is Seema Harsha, and she is also on a mission to educate women on how you need to know about the investments that you've made in property. You know, and uh, you know uh, when she was sharing her experience, she just. she did say that whenever she walked into a home, the husband was always answering all the questions, and it was never the woman. and yeah and they are so scared to take any decision because uh, obviously you know financially um, <laughs> i think many, many women are not literate but things are really changing and uh, the entire marriage construct is changing uh, near and people are becoming independent and people are beginning to know that everything can be uh, sourced outsourced and uh, you know whatever that you're not good at i think uh, you know of. even if uh, you have a very uh, a uh, mutual understanding and a loving partner also i think you should handle your own finances not Absolutely. because they uh, you don't trust the other partner but uh, you know it will give you a confidence that you are able to handle your own finances and uh, tomorrow come what may you are sane you are financially sane so uh, not not for not trusting because uh, you know and when i used to educate women they used to tell to me that but if i take care of my finances my husband will you know be uh, unsure of where i want to use my money but that's an insecure man yes yes and it's not about using your money it's about knowing where your money is going absolutely absolutely it is about actually covering you know your future because you never know you know as to what lies ahead and you need to probably take care of your own stuff So thank you so much Neha it's been fantastic having you today on the podcast and wonderful to know the multiple hats that you wear and how deadly you are actually <laughs> <laughs> Thank you thank you Mohan Ah oh, this is deadly to know finance and also be creative is not something that a man would want to quickly meet <laughs> The new age woman yeah. you know and uh, they better buckle up to catch up on women like you neha wishing you luck with your work and whenever i launch my book i would love to be part of your book club yes, which i'm hoping definitely. should be by the end of this definitely. year definitely and we would obviously contact you and we would have your review done and you know we will have an instagram live session so yeah let's connect thank you so much neha thank you for taking out the time today to talk to my listeners and me i'm completely honored to have you on my podcast today thanks thank and wishing you. you loads of luck and uh, success in all the things that you're going to take forward women like you need to come out and tell their story of bravery bravado as to how much it takes to restart all over again so to me you're my hero thank you so thank much thank you so much mo it's a pleasure talking to you thank you thanks to you our dearest listeners you can find us on your favorite streaming services find us on spotify amazon music apple podcast and of course all other major streaming services with loads of love we are mudimo avas podcast where hatke is hot <laughs> <laughs>